Obon is uh, an ancient tradition. It originated in Japan. It grew out of uh, <clears throat> Buddhist myth and legend and folklore many, many years ago, 2,500 years ago to be exact. Uh, a student of the Buddha came to him very distraught over his mother's death. He had had a vision of her suffering as a hungry ghost, as a person who died with unresolved issues, unfulfilled wishes, uh, things that uh, hadn't been taken care of adequately in life and still uh, lingered behind. And so he went to the Buddha and confessed this to him and uh, Shakyamuni Buddha said, go and make offerings to the monks who have just completed their summer intensive of training, their summer retreat. And so he did this and then that night he went home and had a dream where he had a vision of his mother. And uh, he saw many things about her life. It's as, he, as if the veil that separated the two worlds, the world of the living and the world of the dead, had uh, suddenly become very, very thin, and he could see to the other side. And he saw, uh, among other things, what an extraordinary mother she had been, and felt uh, boundless gratitude. And that gratitude itself was uh, very, very healing, and uh, liberated her from her suffering. And so overjoyed was uh, he at this uh, vision of her as being liberated uh, from her suffering that he spontaneously began to do the Oban Odori dance, <laughs> which is a, a sort of a very, very joyful late summer dance. Fall isn't here yet. The summer heat is sort of beginning to break. Things are starting to feel better. The longer days are giving way to the slightly longer nights. Dusk comes on early. And there's a, a feeling of peace and contentment about this time of day. And uh, this is probably the uh, ancient origin of this festival. It's been celebrated in Japan every year for about five, six hundred years. Uh, in America now for about a hundred years since it is a way of honoring those who have passed away and gathering their energy together and gathering our energy together to uh, honor them uh, in a uh, common fashion. Traditionally many offerings are made, flowers, incense, uh, but the offering that is made uh, more often than not is the offering of sound. That's what we're doing tonight. Sound and light. Sound and light. breath likewise being a microcosm of things born and dying. Each birth comes forth from the great mystery and each breath also comes forth from the great emptiness. It abides a while and it dissolves and vanishes into the ground from where it came.
question of the Native American. The word for sound is the word for breath. And now the breath of God, in the beginning there was sound. And uh, one thing that I learned about sound is that it works like a conduit. It can be a tool to get closer to the divine and closer to the people that pass and are here in spirit. One way to work with sound is to drop from our head to our heart and ride the sound with our heart, with our thinking. No. 